Hey guys, Jacqueline Steele here, and I am doing a live class on reducing overwhelm because I feel like it is such an epidemic in our country and in the world. So as we are getting ready to begin, I just want to say if you're on, please give me a hello, say where you're from and what you do. I'm going to give people just a couple of seconds to join in on our live conversation. This is so cool because I feel like you guys are in my living room with me. It feels like we're having a very intimate conversation. So, oh wow, seven people are on already. This is so cool. Okay, well, let's begin. So this live course is about reducing overwhelm. I feel like with as connected as we are through the internet, um, via social media and all of the other channels in which we can be contacted, it is so easy to become overwhelmed to the point where you just don't want to do anything. You don't want to get out of bed, you don't want to go to work, you don't want to do anything because you're so stinking exhausted. And um, so this class, the point of this class and the intention of this class is to help reduce overwhelm help you be less reactive and more proactive and help you to be on offense versus defense. Um, so let's get started. These are the five ways that I help myself to reduce overwhelm. Number one is to recognize that you're overwhelmed. And while this may seem incredibly simple, our lives are so busy and so fast paced that often we don't even recognize what kind of emotional state we're in. So I would encourage you to take a moment each day, maybe even set an alarm on your phone to remind you to check in with yourself and get in tune with how you're feeling. I use um, a couple of different tactics to do that. I have an app called the Spirit Junkie app by Gabrielle Bernstein that goes off at noon. Um, and that's just a gentle little reminder to check in and calm down. Then I also use an app um, called Truth Bomb by Danielle Laporte, which is absolutely fantastic. I also set that to go off every single day. Oh, thanks for the love, guys. That goes off every single day and is another reminder to just calm down for a moment and check in with myself. So step number one, recognize that you are overwhelmed. And in that moment of overwhelm, I want you to take a deep breath. Now, what, what happens when we take a deep breath is actually very incredible. Not only do you need oxygen to live, but breathing detoxifies the body. It gets our lymphatic system going, which flushes out the toxins. So each deep breath that you take is actually detoxifying your body. It aids in weight loss because it gets blood pumping to your heart and increases your cardiovascular capacity. It eases pain, it eases stress, it um, makes you feel very calm as you breathe deeply and inhale and exhale repeatedly. So it's so, so, so important to deep breathe. Like I cannot stress that enough. So recognize that you're overwhelmed and take a few deep breaths. That is step number one. Step number two is determine what is urgent. Um, I think especially as women, so much is thrown at us on a daily basis. There's so much responsibility um, that is put on our plate and that is just a fact and it's okay. It's there, We can't deny that, okay? But as we have this influx of information and needs coming at us, we need to have some kind of filter so that again, we're not overwhelmed. And the filter for me is to determine what is urgent. So step number two, determine what is urgent. There are always going to be things that are super important and have a deadline, and there are always going to be things that aren't quite as important and don't have a deadline, and you don't want to confuse the two because it's when you confuse the two and you've got a to-do list of 30,000 things and 25 priorities that makes life completely overwhelming. So let me give you an example. Today, my priority is getting on a live chat with you guys. That is an urgent thing. So my entire morning, 
was spent in preparation of getting on for this live conversation. Something that isn't a priority is cleaning out my email box today. You know, would I like to get that done? Absolutely, but that is not my priority today. This live conversation was urgent and something that I needed to take care of. Cleaning out my mailbox, replying to messages on social media, that is not a priority. So again, step number two for reducing overwhelm, determine what is urgent. Step number three, and this is probably my second most important tip, and that is plan out your day the night before. Plan out your day the night before. Oh, hello, my mom is on. Hey, mom. Okay, and Ashley, oh cool, I love reading all these comments. I can be such a spaz at times, recovering control freak and perfectionist, I need these tips. I am a total recovering perfectionist and control freak as well. And I love to maximize time, I love being productive, but at the same time, I'm less productive when I'm overwhelmed. So again, these tips are so huge. So going back to planning out your day the night before, I use a planner called the Danielle Laporte Dream Mapping Planner. And what I do, this is just like a little example of my day yesterday, but I go in the night before and I put down the few things that I have to get done the next day. Not just the things I want to get done, those are secondary. The things that I have to get done, and then I try and gauge how much time each thing is going to take. And then anything else that needs to happen during the day is planned around those priorities. So, plan out your day the night before. It might take five minutes, it might take 10 minutes, but then when you wake up the next day, you're not going, oh my gosh, I have a list of a thousand things to do, I don't even know where to start. You already have your game plan ready to go. So it is a great way to be proactive instead of reactive when you sit down at your desk or sit down at whatever kind of workspace that you are in. I highly, highly recommend it. If you have any questions about planning out your day the night before, or any specifics and what I do, please direct message me, let me know, um, put a comment in this class. Okay, step number four is you are here, so be here. If you are overwhelmed, there's no point in denying that you're overwhelmed. Running from being overwhelmed isn't going to solve the problem. So as intimidating as it could be, as scary as it could be to face overwhelm, it's super important that you address it and that you come up against it and you say, okay, I gotta deal with this. I'm not gonna push it to the side. I'm not gonna medicate it. I'm not gonna distract myself anymore. I am going to get down to the nitty gritty. I'm gonna be here. One thing that my mom told me growing up was, if you can't get out of it, get into it. And that is something that has stuck with me my entire life because it's very applicable. There are always going to be things that we don't want to do. But if you can't get out of it, get into it. Which leads me right into step number five, which is the last step for reducing overwhelm. And that is take action. Um, this also seems like such an obvious step, but taking action is the key to reducing overwhelm. And what I mean by that is when you write down your priorities, when you write down your to-do list, you actually do them. It's so easy, especially in our incredibly busy world, to be distracted or to allow things to slide. But if you don't want to be overwhelmed constantly, you have to take action every day. And by no means does that mean you shouldn't take time to relax or engage in self-care or do whatever it is that you need to do to be a healthy and happy human. But if you want to live a life of productivity and a life of successful ventures, then you have to take action every single day. Tony Robbins said something to the effect of, we overestimate what we can do in a day, but underestimate what we can do in a decade. And so, that being said, taking action every single day toward your goals is going to get you there faster than anything else on this planet will. I am a huge advocate for um, 
meditation and envisioning and creating vision boards and making things uh, a reality by by thinking on them and setting intentions but if you don't combine that with action it's not going to happen things just aren't going to fall in your lap magically I mean maybe they can once in a while but um, I forget who said it somebody by the last name Thurman T-H-U-R-M-A-N said luck is when action meets opportunity something along those lines and that is true luck isn't just luck it's when you create a scenario in which you're taking action and then those actions meet opportunity so you can create your own luck by taking action something that's been really helpful for me that I've done the last couple of weeks is on Monday mornings I do a free flow with a blank piece of paper of everything that I need to get done whether it's for that week or that month or whatever and I just do a free flow um, you know it, it's everything from schedule a coffee break to schedule a live conversation on Facebook to get my dogs groomed to go grocery shopping so business combined with real life and then I take that list, that free flow of thought to get everything out, and then I prioritize it and schedule it in my planner. And that sets my week up to go, okay, I don't have to have all of these thoughts floating around in my head. They're on a piece of paper. I know where they are if I need to go and check them out. And now I have everything prioritized for the week. I know what has to get done by Friday, and I know the things that I'd like to get done by Friday. So those are my five tips for reducing overwhelm. I'm going to do a little recap. Number one is stop, recognize that you're overwhelmed, and start breathing. That will immediately calm you down and get you into a positive headspace where you can deal with the overwhelm. Number two is determine what is urgent. Anything that is not urgent should not be top of mind, should not be your priority for the day. That can be for after you finish your priorities. Number three, plan out your day the night before. So in the morning, you start out on offense versus defense, being proactive instead of reactive. Number four, you're here, so be here. And again, what my mom said is so, so true. If you can't get out of it, get into it. And number five, take action. You can do it, write down what you need to do, and just tackle it. If you have any questions, please, please contact me, direct message me, email me at hello at JacquelineSteel.com. I do do one-on-one -on -one conversations and consulting. So if you'd like to schedule a discovery session, um, if you have any questions on life, business, social media, marketing, any of those things, I would love to set up a discovery session with you. Explore. I'm very confident that I can help you and help you achieve your dreams. So there is today's live class. Thank you so, so much for joining. Now I am going to look and see if there are any questions and we can do a little Q&A. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Okay, so Ashley Perkins said, how do you feel about that method? Can't remember the name of it, but essentially you work for 25 minutes and then take a five minute break. I haven't tried it because I feel like it'll make me more unproductive. It seems like you're not working long enough before a break. Okay, so this is time blocking, and I am a fan of time blocking, but I don't like the 25-minute increments either. So I actually do 90-minute increments. That, for me, is a great way to like really get into the flow of whatever, I, of whatever task I have to do. And most tasks or priorities that I have for the day require more than 25 minutes. So I think if you are a very, um, if you're a person who can't sit long, then try the 25 minute blocks with five minute breaks. If you are a person that likes to be focused and likes to really dive into your work, try the 90 minute blocks with 30 minute breaks. I also love the 30 minute breaks. I feel like it's such a big payoff. Um, if you're somewhere in between, try 50 minute blocks with 10 minute breaks. You know, every person is a little different and your length of focus time is going to be different. Um, so determine what is a really good 
uh, time block for your time investment, like the, the rate of return on your time investment, and then go with that and experiment until you find something that feels comfortable for you. That would be my recommendation, but I do really like time blocking because I feel like I can get, I, like I can get so much done. And then also, it reminds me to take breaks during the day. Because I know for me, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, if I work an 8 or 10 hour day and I don't take breaks in between, by the time that day is over, I am so exhausted. I'm exhausted into the next day. So I think pacing yourself, just like a runner would in a marathon, they're going to refuel by having healthy drinks and snacks and stuff. You need to do that with your mind. You need to take a break and refuel and re-energize. Okay, let's see. Uh, Wendell said, thank you, Jacqueline. Hope you have a great day, too. Your advice and wisdom is spot on. Oh, thank you, Wendell. I appreciate that so much. So um, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Um, my plan is to do a live Rebel course every Wednesday. So I would love to hear from you guys. If you have topic questions, topic um, suggestions, I would love to hear them, and I would be happy to touch on them uh, if they are an area in which I know a lot. So have a wonderful, wonderful day, light and love and peace. Bye guys.